Hi, my name is Dawn Schnabel. I'm a registered dietitian, certified diabetes educator with Care. Today I'm going to do a video and demonstration on how to use a blood glucose meter. People that have type 2 diabetes, it is important that they check their blood sugars on a daily basis. So please contact your doctor and have him prescribe you a glucose meter. There are many different glucose meters out there. Typically people get the one that is best covered by their insurance. When checking your blood sugars, these daily numbers provide a lot of important information for us. They tell us how foods affect your blood sugars, what, which foods do not affect your blood sugars, how well are your diabetes medications working, and also how exercise affects your glucose numbers. The frequency of checking your blood sugar can vary depending on the type of diabetes that you have and what your doctor would like you to do. Typically, people check their blood sugars anywhere from one to four times a day. Some do it more. Um, they can range from checking right away in the morning before they eat or drink anything, pre-meal, two hours post-meal, or at bedtime. And again, when working with your doctor, he'll let you know when he wants you to check that. Normal glucose ranges are 80 to 130. That is where we'd like to see your numbers. If you do check your blood sugars two hours post-meal, then less than 180 is goal. And if you check before bedtime, less than 140. Today I'm going to demonstrate on how to utilize a glucose meter. They all work very similar, so you can just refer to your glucose book manual, and that will help you out with more specifics with that specific meter. With each meter, when you first get a meter, you're going to get a kit in a box, and it's going to have a glucose meter, it will have some form of lancet device, hopefully some lancets, which are the needles that you use to poke your finger, and then test strips. When you do check your blood sugars, we want to poke the sides of our fingers. That's where we poke ourselves when checking. And you want to make sure you rotate your fingers, because if you poke the same finger all the time, it will get sore. When checking your blood sugars, first you take your new glucose meter, and you'll turn it on by the power button, and when it is new, you'll need to adjust the time and the date. Usually the date is correct, but the time is off. To get your glucose meter situated, you first take this lancet device. This is the device that you'll use to poke your finger with. You can see there is a little hole at the end, and that's where the needle is going to come out. So first we want to put in a new needle, or lancet. You're going to twist the top on this one. It pulls off. On others, sometimes they just pop off. So it does vary. You take your clean new lancet and you click it in. And then we're going to take the safety top off, twist it and pull it off, and there's the needle. Then we'll hide it and we'll put the cap back on. So you will not see it when it does poke your finger. On each lancet device, there is a dial with the numbers, and that dial is going to tell you how deep that needle is going to poke. If you are new at this and your fingers are pretty soft, you do not need to have it at the highest mark. I would encourage you to put it at the medium or two or three, number two or three, somewhere in the middle. On this one, I'm going to use three because below three, it usually doesn't poke too much, hard enough. To set up this Lancet device, there's going to be a big button on it, and you're going to pull that button back until you hear it click. Now, other Lancet devices, some you have a button in the back that you have to pull. But on all Lancet devices, there is a button that you have to pull to set that trigger button. Before I demonstrate how to poke your finger, I'm going to show you about the actual test strip. You're going to take your test strip out. And test strips always come in these black cylinder containers. And you want to keep them in there to protect them so they don't go bad. Um, they can get damaged with heat and too much light. So this is the test strip for this glucose meter. All test strips go with specific glucose meters, so you cannot universally use other test strips with other meters. All meters, test strips, will have one end that goes into the meter, and then the other end is where we add the blood. You do not add the blood first until you put that test strip into the meter. On the actual glucose meter, again, that does vary from meter to meter. The insert part will either be on top of the meter, such as this one. Some meters, it's on the bottom. 
Some meters go long and they're on the side. So again, it all depends on which meter you have. When you place the test strip into the glucose meter, the meter will turn on automatically, so you do not have to do anything. And then when you take that test strip out, it will turn off. On the back of every glucose meter, there is going to be a 1-800 number for that company and also the pouch where the battery goes. So if you have any troubles, you can always call or change out your battery. Batteries do tend to last for over a year, so most people don't have too many issues with them. All right, so I'm going to take my glucose meter test strip and I'm going to stick it into the top and the meter turns on. It's going to think for a couple seconds and then it will show you a drop of blood. When you have that drop of blood on there, it says, okay, I'm ready to receive the blood. And on this particular test strip, the line goes across, so that's where I want to place the blood. When you do place your blood on the test strip, do not place it on top or the bottom of the test strip. Always place it on the side or the edge so that the blood can wick between those two layers of the test strip. So you're going to take your Lancet device, and you're going to find your finger that you're going to poke for this time. I'm going to take my button, pull it back until I hear it click. So I know that's all set, ready to go. I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to hit that trigger button, pull it away, give it a little squeeze, and you can see I have a little drop of blood. So it does not take much at all to check your blood sugar. I'm going to take that blood, put it at the edge of the test strip. It wicked across, and now in five seconds, it will give me a glucose reading, 87. Again, normal glucose range is 80 to 130. That's what your target is for. When you start checking your blood sugar readings, you want to log it in a logbook or some kind of notepad. They do make specific logbooks for glucose monitoring, which have the dates, days of the week, and then the meal, whether you did it before breakfast, lunch, supper, or bedtime. It is important that you log them because then you get a visual picture of what's happening with your blood sugar readings. And if you're new to diabetes, you can see where are your blood sugars today and where are they in a couple weeks after you've had treatment and made dietary changes. Always bring your logbook to your doctor's appointment so they can see those. When you are all done checking your blood sugars, you can take the test strip out, the meter will turn off, and you can throw that test strip away. With your Lancet device, the actual Lancet that you have used, this is considered biohazard, so you do not want to throw this in the garbage. So with this device, I can take this little button, push it forward, and it does spit out the needle for the Lancet for me. However, they don't all do that, so some you just have to pull out. What I want to do with this needle now, because it is biohazard, I want to either put it in a sharps container, or if you have an empty laundry detergent bottle, you can take that, write sharps on it, and then keep these in there. Once you fill that bottle up, which will take a while, you can take it to any sharp collecting sites out there, and they range from some pharmacies will take them and dispose of them for you, or the ER departments um, will, at the hospitals will usually take them. And that's how you check your glucose reading. Uh, it's very important to do this. I encourage you to get a glucose meter if you do have diabetes and start checking so you can learn what are your glucose readings at and what you need to do to change to make them in the right range of 80 to 130. Thank you.